Hey, good morning, you guys. Hayden Aquilon here with another great video for you today. It's actually going to be a special video, a little longer than usual, just because I have a lot I want to cover. I'm actually going to cover, let's give you the exact chapter here, a section that is labeled, well, the subheading is retail arbitrage, but it is my route and slash the ideal route. This is from my book that just came out earlier this year on Jan 1. I'm going to take you guys through the entire uh, process I did to get to where I am now. We just had our first full year uh, in 2020. March March uh, 1st was technically our uh, two full years in business, but we, you know, 2019 we had started in March, so we only had 10 months that year. So 2020 was our first full year. It's amazing how fast things have grown. Um, I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about what I would have done differently too, because there, there are things for sure. But I'm going to give you guys the whole outline right now in terms of sales numbers when I transitioned, and I think it'll help a lot of you guys. So let's just dive right in. I hope you all are doing well, and this should definitely help you. So the first, the first thing, and I always recommend this. I never recommend jumping right in the bulk unless you're heavily capitalized and you have some experience. But for most of you who don't have a ton of money to use, you always should start with cherry picking first. Let's do this. All right, so cherry picking. All that simply is, is that means that you are going to the books, you're driving to thrift stores, you're going to libraries, wherever it is, you're going to find the books yourself. Um, you're doing a lot more legwork, it's a lot more sweat equity. Um, you're just, you're doing whatever you can to find books, garage sales, estate sales, whatever they are. So this is, <clears throat> at this point, so let me just quickly jot down for you guys who want to take notes, right? So we got garage sales, Library sales. We're going to do um, libraries in general. Just most libraries have a section where you can go where there's very cheap books to buy. A library sale is actually an event where there's a ton of people and a lot of books that are put out. Um, let's also do uh, thrift stores. So, I would add estate sales in there too if you want, but these are a lot more dependable and happen a lot more frequently, such as garage sales. I mean, you can find a garage sale every weekend. Estate sales are a little hit or miss, but these are dependable um, revenues or avenues to get, um, you know, books while you're cherry picking. So, when I was in this, this area, I got to... 5,000 to 10,000 in sales on a consistent basis. It was more towards the 10K range before I did anything to move to the next level, which is, this is what I recommend. This is what I call the hybrid model. Now the hybrid model, you're still incorporating some of this, but you're also going to be adding basically streams of books that are, they're larger in scale, or meaning you can get a ton at one time from other sources. So those in particular are going to be estate sale cleanouts. We're also going to have uh, store liquidations, which I've done a few of those, which are awesome. Um, I just did, I just did a, a bookstore. It was an hour drive away. I took a 16 foot box truck, and uh, we just, it was incredible. We just cleaned up. I think we we had access to like 20, 20 books, and there was, I don't know, it was like a 
20 something percent scan rate. It was amazing. Great quality books. Uh, we also got media, which is great. I'm doing media now for those of you who follow me closely. Um, at State Sale, I've had some of the best. The best one I ever had was uh, recently, and I've had a couple this big, but this one was the best. Uh, they had 30,000 books sitting in the house. It was, it was insane. Every room was just books. It was crazy. And uh, the woman whose house it was used to be a bookseller. Um, and unfortunately, she had passed away, and so her her heirs were just, they were going to just throw them all away, basically. So I came in, I was able to pay them a decent amount for them. And uh, I guess while we're on the subject, I'll touch on that. It's really up to interpretation what you want to pay per book, what you think it's worth. For this in particular, I was able to, I, I essentially just talked to them about a an overall price per book. Um, not ideal. What, what you should do is bring your software, bring your computer, set up like a foldable table, and you can actually just, you know, hit everything there. The problem with that is that a lot of people aren't receptive to that unless you're able to take everything. Uh, we actually had to go there twice. Um, we had a 26-foot um, truck. We, had to, we filled it twice with books, which is nuts. And it was, it was an all-day thing, both days, and it was... It was like 104 degrees outside. It was a fun day. So, two days. So, still worth it 100%. Um, you know, negotiate with them however you want. Obviously, it's ideal to pay them for books that are actually um, worth something. So, in some ways, I took a risk. But just looking at them, I mean, they were all out on the shelves. I knew it was like, oh, it's going to be good. So, we, uh, we ended up doing really well on that one. Um, but always bring a computer and a scanner and, you know, offer to do it that way. Offer to do it on consignment where you take everything and you say, hey, I'll give you 30% of the yield because I have to rent the trucks. I have labor. I have to put everything online. And you can, you know, go into a little bit about how you can track that for them accurately and, and explain to them they're going to make more money over time because they will versus just a little lump sum from a company like, half price books like we have that you can take books to the counter for and you know them having to come lug everything out I mean that's it's, they don't want to do it trust me so just give them give them an option and they're gonna they're gonna work with you for sure um let's see so yeah so a little bit of new right where we're getting bulk and then obviously we're still utilizing you know library sales you can still get a few i don't like doing library sales anymore they're fun i just don't i don't do them anymore um if you have what's kind of cool is if you have an employee that you're not paying too much you can actually train them to go do those too if that's working for you for a while that knows which books are good that knows where to go to scan they're not running into the you know, fiction section, they're going right to the textbooks, they're going to, you know, the health and wellness, art history, that kind of stuff, right? So you can train someone up to do that. I don't want to do that anymore. Um, also, um, you know, still incorporate the, the thrift stores here and there. Because you still need a solid base, right? You know, these aren't going to just be here every second. These are just adding, like, the cherry on top where you're going to get a lot more volume. Um, and... Through these, or, or for these, you're going to be using a lot of Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist to not only find these, but to post about them. You need to be putting leads out into the world all the time. I, we were posting every week nonstop for a long time. Um, so I did this model from 10000 in sales to 20000 And again... On the higher end, we were doing it too. Um, this is when I started to move to, I call it the 50 50 model. So, go there. so this is when we started incorporating bulk books. Or Gaylords of Books, however you want to say it. Um, we also had 
Continuation of our store liquidations. We also had, um, so they, we have this one source, and I don't, I, mean, I don't care to share it, you know, I'm gonna share it with you, I don't care. It's, uh, we have a Goodwill outlet in town that's just, I mean, we, so we buy bulk from these guys, but they also hold back a lot, and they, they tend to dump a lot of raw product into the store for some reason. They won't sell it to us for more, so whatever. Um, we'll go there every now and then, it still yields just incredible books. I mean, it's we're getting them five for a dollar, and you can go in there in like 30 minutes, you come out with a basket full. It's pretty crazy. And a lot of the guys who used to go there, I don't see anymore. So they might have stopped. They might have took everything. I'm not sure. But uh, that's always been great. So we continue to do a very select uh, amount of cherry picking. And it's got to be cherry picking where, you know, you really leverage your time. You can't just go to thrift stores and find three or four at a time and whatnot. And, um, you know, another justification for us here is that we keep showing up in front of those guys over there, our contacts. They always see us. We're always talking to them. We're always friendly. They're always, they know we're there, right? So they don't forget about us. So we go in there and I'm always like, hey, do you guys got any more raw books to sell? You know, so I'm kind of always in their ear. Um, so we're doing that. So one thing I needed to touch on too <clears throat> is all through this point, this should be, the, this is like, here, let me just write it. So this is like living room or like a home office. You can do all this stuff in, right? When you're selling FBA, you're sending all this stuff in anyways. It's not going to build up in your house. When you move into this, you're going to be looking more at garage or a storage unit. Look, I am not a fan. I'm not a fan of a storage unit. Like I, I recommend it, but it really is not ideal, you guys. Like I, especially living in a hot climate like Texas, you're gonna be miserable. At least with a garage, like you can step inside your house and cool off if you want, or you can list inside and you can just store your product in the garage. But I. I don't recommend this, but some people have to do it. A lot of people live in apartments. So that's that's your option right there. At this level, <clears throat> I'm doing this from 20K to 50,000 in sales. And again, like on all these, it's on the high end. I'm just showing you the range of which we started. But you want to be on this end, right? We're using cash flow to then move in to buy more larger amounts of quality of books, right? We're getting big loads of books at this point. You know, another thing to maybe mention was like, in this, in this level, I'm spending hundreds of dollars a month on books. This level, I'm spending maybe a couple thousand a month on books, maybe. This level, you're spending a lot more money on books and probably 6,000 a month at least on books at this level. So that's why I say, you know, you're not moving to the next model until you're on the higher end. You need the cash flow and the net profit, of course, to then afford to do operations in another area. Um, and then at this point, you really do need a warehouse. So, and again, towards this end, right? You need a warehouse. I got a little trigger happy. I went in on this side. That's because of my situation. Financially, we were in a great situation. So I, I took a little bit of a risk, not a ton, and I went into there. But I would wait as long as you can to get into a warehouse. Now, this is where things get really, really interesting. Um, I'm not going to draw an arrow all the way down and around, but let's just go down to the middle here. So... this oh so this is basically 100 percent bulk you got a, a bulk operation um this is when we're looking at this a lot more we're getting multiple sources
But guys, at this point, I have like, I have at least probably 14 sources, milk sources, that are dependable. Um, They're not all great, but I can get books from them if I need to. Um, you can find these, any Google searches. LinkedIn searches are my favorite to find bulk sources. You just look at, you know, look at the company you want to go after and look for the relevant titles. You're looking for like <clears throat> warehouse managers. You're looking for, I have, and I have them all in my book. Um, I put a bunch of the different titles in here that you're looking for. A lot of it has to do with like recycling in their name, recycling managers. Um, those people are the ones that are controlling the flow of product. Uh, VP of, of uh, recycling, VP operations. The list is going to go on and on. You can also reach out above them and, and let them know what you're doing. And they will actually point you to the direct person. I've done that multiple times and it works great. So we got multiple sources of bulk. We're developing, this is when I started to develop relationships with several thrift stores in town. This is where you're going to go to them and you're like, hey, this is what I do. You don't need to tell them if you don't want it. I'm always transparent. It's never worked against me. I think it, I think it helps. Um, this is what I do. I go around. We have set schedules or they call us anytime they have product they want to move, any still inventory. And so you can offer even to bring them a pallet with a, a huge Gaylord box and just say, hey, dump all your stuff into here. You can set up relationships where you do a, you know, a, some kind of a split with consignment. You can pay them per box, which is what we do with some of them. Um, we pay between like 3 and $5 a box. Obviously, you need to evaluate it and see if it's worth it, which we do with our software. Uh, but that's, a, that's one way to do it. Um, that yields us not nearly as many books as these, as our bulk sources, but they're higher quality usually. So you cannot... Uh, dismiss that. Um, we have also lead sources. It had nothing to do with these. These are from our website. Now, our site, and someone mentioned this a long time ago, so I want to clarify it. So, our website is austinbookdonations.com. Feel free to go there, check it out. Um, Donations.com. Um, go there, check it out. You can model it, copy it, whatever you want to do. I got the shout out to Matthew Osborne for giving me this template. Um, it's awesome. It's it's been good for us. So definitely do this. Um, we get several free pickups. I got two last week. I haven't spent I spent like a few cents on ads, whatever it is. It's like under a dollar. I I tried to run some at one point and. It's just, right now, we're so, we have so much going on here and here that it's hard to really focus on this. That's more manpower. That's potentially even investing in our own truck for these pickups. But this has been really good to us. Last week, in fact, we got one, one pickup was 15 boxes and the other was, I think, 11 or 12. So we got 27 boxes or so of raw books which yielded it's like at least a thousand dollars. So those were, one was free. The other one I wrote a $15 check to. So how I evaluated was, is I put it in our software, which is called IQ. Shout out to Caleb. I looked at, you know, we build, we build a lot of wholesale pallets these days. So I looked at the overall value. I, I multiplied it by the amount we sell our pallets, which is, you know, 33%. And then I, I took 10% of the 33% to give them their take on it. So they're happy with it. We picked it up. They didn't have to move it around and they got paid. So do something like that. Um, also, um, this has been nice. This is one more thing here. Um, wholesaling to other sellers. Gosh, that is. I can barely even read that. Sorry. So wholesaling to other sellers. Um, this has been good for cash flow. We don't do this as much anymore, but it was good when I was, you know, moving along here. There's a couple times where 
things were tighter and we had a lot of extra inventory in stock so we were just flipping them and I, I usually recommend um, you know back in the day I would double the price I was getting them for so if you get them cheap enough you can still sell them to somebody at a great price right so if you're getting them for 50 you can flip them for 100 if they have a great yield um, which a lot of ours do um, <clears throat> So this is kind of the overall thing here. So this is like, you know, this is 50K and up, right? And higher. That's ugly too, sorry. And so right now, like I guess I can give you guys a whole, a whole update, but do yourself a favor. It's like 14 bucks. It's on Amazon. It's got a great, it's got a lot of my story. It's got a lot of great sources in it. And it's got stuff on negotiation, cash flow, everything all right so check it out check it out um so right now i'd love to give you guys an update so we are we are basically a wholesaler at this point we only do green pallets we've kind of we've become like my my friend's dad called us miners so we're basically like I think of us more as like, we're like refurbishers. We're a refurbishing company now. So we get all these sources in from everywhere. And we, we take them in, you know, with the, for our media, we have to replace cases. We make everything look good. Books get cleaned, whatever. We pack them up and we send them out to other sellers. So we've been doing that. We're loving it. We're, we like the model. The main thing that you will struggle with as you go through all this is cash flow. Um, you know, the standard, if you will, the gold standard of, of sell-through rate online these days is about 20%, maybe 25, depending on. Depends how uh, crazy your prices are. But this is kind of the standard. So when you're plowing in money nonstop and you're only getting 20 to 25% of it back, Guess what? You have you have cash problems. Okay, with what we're doing, the margins are or the sell through is obviously a hundred percent, right? We're only we get an order, we fulfill the order, we get paid. Okay, and the margins the margins are not as high, but the cash flow is quick, so it's allowed us to scale up a lot faster. Um, I really like this model. I do miss. I miss. Direct to consumer. I really do. I I, I wish uh, if I I don't personally like like the act of like packing the orders and sending it all out and answering questions online. Like I don't like that. So, but I would train someone else to do that. I have uh, four employees right now, so I'd have them doing that. But I'm just saying, like I miss. I, I think our numbers would be a lot higher if I stuck to just selling online versus making a pivot to selling other sellers. So I encourage you to do that, but don't go as fast as I did through this. Um, we we pivoted in, you know, basically for necessity, like we had so much cash flow, only so much cash flow that we had to make a lot of moves, you know, to basically keep feeding the beast and keep everything going. I kept I kept going bigger and bigger and bigger last year. We moved from a 1,000 square foot warehouse to a 2,100 square foot warehouse to a 5,000 square foot warehouse all in one year. I moved twice. So it was nuts. So now we're doing this now. We're loving it. My, the, here's the cool, exciting update is my brother is moving here in about two weeks. He's going to basically head up the whole direct-to-consumer side. So the Amazon, the eBay. I'm going to let him just have free reign. We already have the infrastructure, it's gonna come in, we're just gonna feed him product and he's just gonna get it rolling. We have 56, I think it's 56,000 uh, spaces for media, for shelving, MF, and then we have, we don't have many for books, we have like 7,000 for books. But we'll have to look at what we're gonna do with that. We might just go FBA with books, but to be determined on that, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you haven't, please support. Get the book, you're gonna love it. We got a lot of good reviews coming in and uh, I will talk to you guys on the flip side. Have a great day.